Hey guys, it's Trafalton. You know, we hear a lot about Windows and the push for always online, always listening, ever watching Microsoft accounts. Every day, Microsoft is patching yet another thing and get you an old fashioned local account just like you can on Mac and Linux. But why is it that everyone makes a fuss about it every time it happens? And why is Microsoft trying so hard to tell everyone to use a Microsoft account? Microsoft gets a ton of criticism from online communities and on social media about the efficacy of having a Microsoft account. They say it gives you a lot of security benefits, but does it actually? <laughs> but before we dive into that, I think it's important to understand why Microsoft pushes accounts so hard and some of the benefits that you can actually get for using one. First, Microsoft accounts are unified identities, which are typically created by system administrators to control what employees or users do with company-owned devices. Windows comes with group policies, which let admins control what people do with their computers and it protects them from basic threats. One great example of this is the role that Microsoft accounts play with the Windows full disk encryption solution, BitLocker. BitLocker utilizes TPM to ensure that encrypted computers aren't tampered with and protects your computer in the event that your computer is lost or stolen. In this chain, Microsoft accounts store a recovery password that allow admins or users to move their data if you're trying to move something between hard drives or to unlock your data in the event of an emergency. Something that I think is important to remember is that the majority of Windows users will capitulate when they're asked and sign up for a Microsoft account, both because they're encouraged to do so, but also because there's real consumer facing benefits to having a Microsoft account. This comes from things like syncing your Windows settings, integrating Xbox more firmly for people who have Xbox or use Game Pass, or if you're trying to sync applications that you had downloaded from the Microsoft store. And I would venture to say that less than 5% of global Windows users are actually clamoring for life without a Microsoft account. IT administrators use them and it has benefits to the average user and it provides recourse to everyone in the event that the person using the computer forgot their password or can no longer access their computer. All right, now that I've made everybody angry and they've left their comments down below, I think it's time to complain about Microsoft accounts. The primary reasons to avoid using a Microsoft account come down to privacy concerns, how aggressive Microsoft is in trying to get people to make one, and some of the practices are not in the best interest of your wallet. <laughs> Microsoft is one of the most privacy invasive companies on the planet. While most people typically think of companies like Facebook or Google, Microsoft actually collects a lot of data about their users. The data collection in Windows is so bad that they have received fines from various governmental agencies about not properly preserving our privacy. And the other major problem is Microsoft's vested interest in collecting and using data, personal or otherwise. I think a lot of people are very quick to jump on the AI bandwagon and claim Microsoft is trying to collect this data to feed their AI networks, but Microsoft has actually been collecting this data long before the AI hype cycle. Ever wonder why Microsoft forces Bing into the Windows search? It's because Microsoft profits heavily from even accidental clicks, as when you search something in Windows, your traffic is sent to Bing, and thus it is monetizable through Bing's advertising network because now you are officially a Bing user and didn't even know it. <laughs> While Microsoft is far behind the giants like Google, Facebook, or Amazon, they are aggressively making partnerships with major online advertisers and retailers to expand their ad network. And we've seen this from what used to be their exclusive deal with Netflix's ad supported tier, but also other advertising agencies like Criteo and Taboola. <laughs> when you create an account, it's a way for Microsoft to brag about their user numbers, their Bing searches from their users, and the advertising deals become more lucrative as a result. Remember that BitLocker technology that I brought up? For years, Microsoft used to lock that behind a paywall. And if you decide to circumvent Microsoft's advice, you do not get any disk encryption on your computer, and instead you must pay for a Windows Pro license. How generous. 
the other problem is it's not just stuff like BitLocker, because even if you are a dedicated user who is able to set up Windows without a Microsoft account, Microsoft is patching out various ways that people use to bypass the Windows 11 installation requirements. And they're also patching out workarounds for people who want to use Windows without a Microsoft account. At the time of writing, you can bypass a Microsoft account requirement by basically making a new user account using the command on screen, and then you can just log into Windows like you would in the e olden days. But with workarounds, they're undesired by nature, and they are not sustainable for internet denizens or IT professionals to use on their friends and family. Now, the first thing we're going to take advantage of is a feature of using the Windows Media Creation Tool. The Windows Media Creation Tool is how people install Windows onto computers. And you can actually download this for free and you can use it, provided you use Windows, of course. <laughs> But the biggest feature of this is once you create your USB stick, you're not actually done because when you install Windows this way, you're just installing Windows or just clicking through the installation as if you would open this computer for the first time. We don't even need to go that far. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our Windows USB and we're going to generate a new auto unattend.xml and put it inside our USB stick. It's basically a file that dictates stuff to the Windows installer and does that during the Windows installation process. So you don't even need to click on anything. In the IT world, this is often done to pre-download applications onto a fleet of computers or to set up computers with specific settings. But for our use case, we're going to use our auto unattend XML to remove pre-installed programs in Windows, handle our Windows product keys, and bypass Windows account requirements and Windows 11 requirements. Now, writing XML files is not fun in the slightest, and I'm pretty sure that even programmers don't like doing it, but there is a website for this. It's called uh, Schneegan's Unattended Generator. What, what, what's a Schneegan? Oh, well, apparently it's a snow goose. So go to Schneegans and start configuring your installer. It offers additional options that might interest you as well, such as your display language, bypassing Windows 11 requirements, setting up your computer name. We're going to start to get into some of the really important stuff, which is things like your Windows product keys. Now, when we talk about Windows, there's actually multiple versions of Windows because most people are typically using something like Windows Home, but there's also stuff like Windows Pro, Windows Education and Windows Enterprise. With a lot of Windows computers that you buy, especially off the shelf, they're going to come pre-installed with Windows licenses. And these Windows licenses are often flashed to BIOS. And the Windows installer is designed to pick up on these licenses and basically put whatever version of Windows you got when you bought your computer on there, unless it's a direct upgrade that you paid for separately. So for example, let's say you bought a laptop and that laptop comes with Windows Home. When you run the Windows installer, installation media, it's automatically just going to slap a Windows Home on there. So basically, as long as you're able to handle paying for a Windows Pro license separately, or if you're willing to deal with a watermark permanently burned into your computer, you can basically use this to get Windows Pro for free, or just use Windows for free and not pay for it at all. And I would recommend doing that because I would not want to pay for these features that should be basic features of an option. But we also have one last thing to talk about, and that's the administrative and user account situation. Currently, in Windows, there is one benefit that a Microsoft account does get you. And typically, the way it works is, who is the administrator of your computer? Now, if you're just a home user, Microsoft doesn't exactly do a good job at this, where instead, they just make it so that your account is the administrator and you actually don't get any of the benefits of being a properly secured Windows account. I, I love Microsoft, they're the best company in the world. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to set up our own uh, user accounts. Now, you can actually do this in Schneegans already, but you'll notice that Schneegans actually does one thing differently than what you'll see most people, how most people set up Windows. And that's, there's an administrator user and a standard user. But what does this actually mean? Well, the reason is, is if you don't have your own IT department, 
by you having a local account, you're going to have to be your own IT department because this is what it takes to be a normal computer user in the year 2025. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> what you're going to do is you're going to make an administrator account with one password, and then you're going to make your user account with one password. When I have done this for other people, I have told them just make both passwords the same, and if you change one, just change the other. <laughs> but what this basically means is when you attempt to install something, there's going to be a pop-up forcing you to enter in your password. But we do have one last benefit to talk about, and it's a great one. It's removing all of the garbage programs that Microsoft pre-installs on you. Stuff like the new Outlook app that everybody totally loves, or stuff like the 3D viewer, as if you weren't going to download AutoCAD and just ignore it. <laughs> So, what we're going to do is we're going to remove all of that, and Sneakins actually provides checkboxes for all of those. And if you're an Ultra Power user, there's one last cool thing, and that's you can add your own Batch or PowerShell script. So if you want to automate things like installing programs using something like Winget, the Windows Package Manager, you can pre-install them from the installation process using your auto unattend.xml. And once you have done all of this, if you just install Windows, the only thing you're probably going to click is the thing that formats your hard drive. And that is probably it. From there, you can basically install Windows the exact same way and even have it pre-download things for you, remove all the things you don't want, get features that Microsoft normally paywalls, and get all of them for free without having to worry about any of it. And you don't have to listen to the advice of people saying, in order for you to use Windows, you need to use a deep loading script. You need to download this program to fix Windows. No, you are taking the initiative to do all of those things yourself using built-in features in Windows. That way, you don't have to listen to anyone online, like say anyone on a news outlet, who's a YouTuber, God forbid a cartoon character, tells you what to do with your computer. You are more prepared and better off without dealing with it. But now that we have our admin and user accounts under our control, we have to get into the joys of BitLocker. Now, if you're a Windows Pro Education or Enterprise user, you can simply just turn on BitLocker from the settings. If you go to Settings, System, About, BitLocker, turn on BitLocker, and then follow the instructions from the Control Panel menu. Next, you're going to be prompted to save your key to a file with three options. Saving your recovery key to your Microsoft account, to a file, or printing it out. Since we're avoiding Microsoft accounts, that only leaves the other two options. And I also recommend leaving a note in your password manager verbatim of the file that Microsoft gave you. Upload it to cloud storage, put it on USB storage or a portable hard drive. Please keep it somewhere safe. This is your get out of jail free card to get back into your computer in the event something happens with BitLocker or you need to unlock it for some form or fashion. Now, if you're a Windows Home user, or because you have a loved one who can't stand the activation watermark, you will not get access to this GUI, and instead, you must resort to hackery. Now, most of what needs to get done is going to be done in Windows Terminal. So the very first thing you want to do is you want to identify your disks using the command get disks. This will list your disks and ensure that your C drive is partitioned as GPT. If you have repeatedly upgraded Windows over the years because you've upgraded your computer and you've upgraded all the way to Windows 11, this has a chance of reading MBR instead. If it does not read GPT and instead says MBR, have fun reinstalling Windows, rewind the video, get that auto unattend XML ready. Next, check if TPM is eligible for Windows 11, as TPM 2.0 is required for Windows 11, and it has massive security benefits. Enter in get WMI object in the series of arguments that follow, and there will be in the output spec version section showing if you have TPM 2.0 or not. Now, if you've bypassed the Windows 11 requirements, you can still get BitLocker using just a key file on a USB stick or a password, but I would like to remind you that Windows doesn't like this and has the potential of making your life more difficult in the future. Either you upgrade your computer, or you just buy a Mac and switch to Linux and don't deal with any of this garbage. 
Now, if you're a valid Windows 11 user, listen on, because we got some work to do. So the first thing we need to do is we need to boot Windows into the advanced setup mode. If you navigate to settings, system, recovery, and advanced startup, hit the restart now button, and then confirm that you are restarting your computer. When your computer reboots, a Windows recovery screen will appear. Navigate to Troubleshoot, Advanced Options, and Command Prompt. And from here, you're going to enter in the following commands to turn BitLocker on. Manage BDE on C dash used. And after you enter this command, close Command Prompt and click Continue to boot back into Windows. So next, log into your standard user account and open Windows Terminal as administrator and enter in your administrator password. Enter in the command on screen to enable the TPM protectors with BitLocker. And this will also produce your BitLocker recovery key, similar to what it does in the GUI way. And please write down the random numbers and letters they give you. Store it in your password manager, put it in cloud storage and a portable hard drive. Protect it with your life. After you have saved your recovery key, run the following to start the encryption process on your C drive. But if you force a Pro license onto your computer, yes, you can use BitLocker without paying Microsoft a single cent. You just pay them your data instead. So if you liked this video, why don't you go leave a like on this video? Leave a like on this video. If you like subliminal messaging, subliminal messaging, what? You mean like Linux, switch to Linux. It's a lot better. You don't have to deal with any of this garbage. It's amazing. And if you're interested in learning more, you can always visit my website, trafoton.com. I also included a special guide for this particular video for you to install BitLocker without a Microsoft account and using a bunch of hacky workarounds to get BitLocker for free in the event you cannot do so through a menu. And if you'd like to support the work that I do, you can always give me money through Patreon, YouTube memberships, or cryptocurrency. So, thank you for watching. I will see all of you next time. And, oh, I'll let you know at the time. I've already made another Windows installation.